Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. Do you often get the sense that your photos are not as crisp and clear as you'd like? That they don't exude a polished look that implies quality. In this video, we're gonna look at all the variables that impact image quality and what we can do about it. If you stay till the end, I'll share with you one of the biggest image quality killers that has nothing to do with your settings, your subject, or your camera. I'm a professional nature and wildlife photographer living in Eastern Canada. I make weekly videos giving you photo tips or taking you behind the scenes for nature and wildlife photography. Subscribe if you want to see more. Let's discuss briefly what we mean by image quality. This is actually more difficult than it looks. It's actually quite subjective and depends quite a bit on the genre, that is the type of photography being done. Some might say sharpness is what exudes quality. That is indeed true in some types of photography like wildlife photography, where showing the fine feather detail or the detail of the fur is quite important and does say a statement about the quality of the image. But there are some portrait photographers or a landscape photo of a foggy scene that has a very soft look without any sharp edges and they still exude quality. Another attribute might be contrast, that is the ability of your photo to represent accurately bright areas and dark areas, and to be able to see with your eye slight variations in brightness and darkness in your photo. Another quality variable would be a photo that has a lot of detail. That is, it has a high resolution so that small, minute details can be picked out from the photo, and that when you blow it up large to make a print, for example, you still retain a lot of those small details. There are probably many, many more attributes that describe quality, but let's move on to looking at what impacts quality and what we can do about it. You want to start off by setting up your camera to take the highest resolution photo that your camera can capture, and you want to shoot in RAW format. Shooting in RAW allows you to recover the darkest and brightest parts of your image, as well change the white balance after you've taken your photo without any penalty. Shooting in the highest resolution allows you to reveal more detail in your subject. I once took photos of foxes that I thought looked great on the back of the camera, but then when I tried to print them very large, the prints didn't look very good. I checked my camera and found that I'd inadvertently changed the quality setting to a lower quality setting of image. Along the lines of resolution again, is getting closer to your subject so that you don't have to crop. Cropping your image reduces the number of megapixels on your subject and reduces the resolution of your photo should you want to print it larger or want to be able to perceive finer details. In wildlife photography like I do, you can't always get closer to your subject, but getting as close as you can so that you don't have to crop as much will always improve my image quality. To note, these last two tips about resolution are even more important if you're gonna be making prints or viewing them on very large screens. If you're gonna be looking at your photos primarily on phones, tablets, and social media, then resolution is maybe a little bit less important compared to if you wanna make large prints. One of the most important, if not the most important attribute to get high quality photos is the quantity and quality of the light. Yes, you can take photos in a dark, dingy environment if that's the genre of photography that you're doing, but for the most part, dark, dingy light leads to dark, dingy photos. So what does good light give you? First, it gives you more vibrant colors. Dark days or dimly lit areas suppresses the color in your photo, which needs a light source or reflected light to show vibrant colors in your photo. Secondly, having poor light will create noisy images. This noise in your image will lower the contrast, lower the details, and lower the dynamic range, that is the difference between the lights and the darks in your photo. You can counteract this by adding more light to the scene, like with a flash or an LED panel, or maybe moving closer to a window, taking your subject outside. You can also lengthen your shutter speed to allow in more light, or open the aperture of your lens also to let in more light. All of these things will improve your image quality by increasing the amount of light that's available for your photo. If you're lowering the shutter speed to get more light, make sure you still have enough to freeze any movement on your subject. While we're on the subject of light, the opposite of dark, dingy light is also a problem. That is bright, harsh light. Portrait photographers, for example, know that they want the light to drop off from bright parts of their image to dark parts of the image very gradually. They do this by using big diffuse lights like soft boxes that diffuse the light, spread it out, and make sure there are no hard edges to the surfaces that they're photographing. Even without any sharp edges, these photos look like they're very high quality and very clear. The full midday sun and bright pinpoint lights are the main culprits here. 
they sap out all the color out of your photo and really blow out the bright highlights in your photo. While these bright whites can be used creatively for some types of photos, they're generally not desirable. Get out of the full sun, get into the shade, or at least shoot the shady side of your subject, not the fully illuminated side. Another factor that's often attributed with quality is sharpness, and for good reason. For some genres of photography like wildlife, being able to see that fine feather detail or fine fur detail really adds a lot to an image. There's a couple of things that you can do to improve the sharpness of your photos. First, shoot your lens at its sharpest aperture. Most lenses are sharper in the center than on the edges, so by stopping the aperture down, you can improve the sharpness of your lens. If you're not sure where to start, try stopping down one full stop. So an f4 lens, you might try shooting that at f5.6. An f5.6 lens, try shooting it at f8. Secondly, to get sharp images, you need to make sure you have enough shutter speed to freeze the action. One one hundredth of a second might be enough for people standing around, one five hundredth of a second for people moving around, one one thousandth of a second for sports, and one four thousandth of a second to freeze a hummingbird. Don't forget if you're shooting very slow shutter speeds to put your camera on a tripod and use a shutter release or two second timer to get really sharp photos. Another element to getting quality photos is to get them in focus. They won't look right if they're not sharp, properly focused, or the proper parts of the photo aren't in focus. For wildlife or portraits, for example, having the eye in focus is what should be your priority. Other types of photography, like landscapes, might prioritize having all of the image in focus. If you're shooting moving targets, make sure to set your camera to autofocus continuous. That's AFC in Nikon and Sony, or AI Servo in Canon. That way, your autofocus is tracking your subject as it moves around. Another factor in image quality is getting the right exposure. While you can make some adjustments in post-processing, if you overexpose your photo too much, you will blow out the bright highlights. If you underexpose your photo too much, you will need to raise the shadows in post-processing, and sometimes that will make the noise worse. Try learning how a histogram works, and try to put the curve that represents the light in your photo away from the left-hand edge, which would be underexposed, and away from the right-hand edge, which would be overexposed. We learned earlier that shooting in low light can cause noise in your images and lower image quality. One thing you can do about this is buy faster lenses, that is, lenses that have a larger aperture or a smaller F number. They will allow in more light and improve your image quality. This is especially important in really dark environments like dark wedding receptions, shooting music concerts, or shooting night photography. Shooting wider aperture lenses allows more light to get onto your camera sensor and allows you to shoot at a much lower ISO. I shoot Milky Way photography with a really fast f1.4 lens. This allows four times more light than an f2.8 lens, so it allows me to shoot at ISO 1600 rather than ISO 6400. Something else that can impact the image quality of your photos is the size of the sensor of your camera. Full frame cameras have very large sensors at 35 by 24 millimeters. After that, we have crop sensor cameras, then micro four thirds sensors, and then we have the very small sensors on your phone's camera. While smaller sensors have come a long way in recent years, larger sensors still have advantages in color fidelity, the number of tones they can capture between dark and light, something called dynamic range, as well as their high ISO performance in dimly lit situations. The good news here is that in well-lit situations like outdoors, smaller sensors can perform very close to larger sensors. But if you like shooting in very dimly lit environments on a regular basis, consider getting the largest sensor that you can afford in your budget. As well, pair it with a lens, as I mentioned earlier, that has as large an aperture as can fit within your budget. Finally, once you've done everything you can to get the best quality photo in your camera, processing is a way of getting the last few quality pieces put together. First, adjust the exposure so that your photo is the appropriate brightness. Maybe pull down those highlights a bit so they're not too bright, raise the shadows just a little bit so they're not too dark. Then you can add a bit of sharpening to your photo in post-processing. Some programs like Lightroom have really handy features to select your subject so you can add the sharpening only to your subject. Finally, if your image is a bit noisy, you can apply some noise reduction to give your image a nice, clean look. Some of the more modern AI-based noise reduction programs do a fantastic job at this. And I promised you an extra tip, and that's to look out for heat diffraction. Bodies of water, sand, concrete, asphalt, these all collect heat and then radiate it back out. Just like in a mirage and a desert, these really negatively impact your image quality as you're trying to shoot through this shimmering air. Try to avoid shooting over concrete or pavement or bodies of water that have been heated by the sun all day. This includes not shooting through the open window of a heated car in the middle of winter. 
To avoid this, try shooting under the canopy of the trees, in the shade, or shooting earlier in the day before these sources have heated up. Also, shooting your subjects farther away with longer focal lengths makes this effect worse because you need to shoot through more shimmering air. Try to get closer to your subject and use shorter focal lengths. If you want to get into more depth on some of these topics, I have a whole video on shooting in low light, which I'll link here, and I have a whole video on shooting sharper bird photos, which I'll link up here. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and YouTube will show it to even more people. I hope you can use these tips to go out and take your own high quality photos the very next time you go out.